this is Adam from bodyweightcoach.com. If you've looked around the site, I'm sure you've seen we've got tons of cool bodyweight exercises uh, kicking around, but one of the comments we get a lot is we don't have enough stuff for beginners. So what I want to do is just take a few minutes and run you through a bodyweight circuit that pretty much anyone can do and that just uses stuff that you can basically find kicking around your house, okay? Uh, first exercise we're gonna do is a pressing exercise, and we're gonna use some kind of a raised surface. Uh, I'd say the easiest thing probably is a good solid coffee table. Um, and the reason we're using that is because a lot of people when they start bodyweight exercises, they have trouble with their wrists. People's, because we work with keyboards and whatnot all day long, we get quite stiff in the wrists. People with arthritis have trouble bending their, their wrists back like this to do a lot of the floor-based bodyweight exercises. So what we're gonna do is take our prop to either side to take some of the pressure off the wrist. Now the other thing is this gonna get us up off the floor a little bit and take away a little bit of the difficulty of the exercise. First thing I want you to do, we're gonna try from knees, squeeze your glutes to get a nice straight line from your head all the way down to your knees. You're gonna lower with your elbows tucked to your side, your shoulders pulled down away from your ears, don't let them hike up, exhale and press off. Now, as you're doing this exercise, if you get any discomfort in the front of your shoulder, just stop at that point so you don't have to come all the way down if it's tender on the shoulders. Now, if that's quite easy, you can come up on your, uh, the balls of feet and it's the same idea, okay? Keep your glutes or your butt muscles clenched, nice straight line, head to heel, lower, exhale, press off. All right, now the higher you get that surface, the easier it's gonna be, the lower it is, the harder it's gonna be. And then eventually, you can go straight from the floor with your knee press or with your standard push-up. And once you've done that, the second movement we're gonna do in our circuit is going to be the McGill Crunch, invented by a guy in Montreal. What I want you to do, lie flat on your back. You're gonna bend one knee, keep the other straight, and do about half your reps. We're gonna do 10 to 12 reps in total. Do half your reps and then switch, just so that we stay equal. You put your hands flat on the floor, slide them under your back, elbows down on the floor, and you're gonna pretend that you're hinged right here under your rib cage, and everything is gonna move from that point. You're gonna exhale, pivot up from that point, right under your rib cage, and then inhale back down. Exhale, pivot up, inhale back down, keeping your lower back in contact with your hands the whole way, your elbows and your hands in contact the whole way. When you get halfway through, make sure you switch up and make sure you're pivoting from this point. So you're not curling up one at a time, you're pivoting straight up from that point. So from here to the top of your head, it stays in one solid block or one solid unit. After you've done 10 to 12 of those, you're gonna roll to your side, get set up on your forearm, Bend your knees with your feet back, squeeze your glutes and bring your hips up off the mat so you got a nice straight line, head down to your knees. What you can do to make sure you get nice alignment with your upper body is point that free hand up towards the ceiling. Now, if this is comfortable, you can go from your feet. One foot on top of the other, squeeze the glutes, drive the hips forward, don't let the hips sag back. Squeeze them nice and tight, keep them forward. Keep this hand pointed to the ceiling to keep this nice alignment with the upper body. You can do that 15 to 30 seconds, 45 seconds even on either side and just build up. As you can do a few more seconds, add those on, all right? So now we're gonna go to the legs. We're gonna do something called a split squat. So get yourself a prop. I'd say a chair back is probably the best thing to use for this. I'm just using a foam roller here. You wanna take a step forward, nice wide stance, about hip width, shoulders square to the front, both feet on railroad, railroad tracks straight to the front. Front knee will stay about over the front foot. You can use this prop to help you. You're gonna lower your hips from here straight down to the floor, okay? So you're not driving your hips forward and down, you're dropping them straight down. This back knee is coming to about one or two inches off the ground and press back up. And you use the back of your prop to help. You can put as much pressure on this as you need to to help yourself back up. You can do 10 to 12 on this side and 10 to 12 on the other. If you feel comfortable, you can just put your hands in front or out to the side for balance. You don't need to use that prop at all, okay? 10 to 12 on one side, 10 to 12 on the other. And then the last exercise we're gonna do is for the back, and it's a bit of a bonus exercise. It's kind of optional, and it depends whether you want to 
invest in some kind of a, a suspension training kit, okay? This is the Rolls Royce. I love this. It's a Jungle Gym XT. Uh, and for what you get, it's dirt cheap. I think it's 99 bucks or something like that. And the, the, the neat thing about this is this knob you can throw over the back of a door, close the door towards you, pull it tight, and you can do your exercises right in front of your door. Okay, so you don't even need any fancy equipment like we've got around here. Um, but if you have a bar or a joist, a ceiling joist or something, it's got a little loop here. Slide your handle in, pull it tight, and you're all set to go. And the neat thing about this too is, look, it's super easy to adjust so I get my handles even. Um, on the blog, we also have a do-it-yourself uh, explanation of how you can put your own rig kind of like this together for anywhere between 10 and 20 bucks using some dog leashes, okay? So either option's great, but these things, if you want to put a little bit of money into them, are definitely an amazing buy. So this exercise is going to be seated on the floor, all right? What you're going to do is just bring your bum up off the floor a little bit, pull your shoulders down away from your ears, and pull your shoulder blades together in the back. And now you're going to pull Actually, don't even think about pulling, think about driving your elbows down towards the floor and then squeezing them almost like you want to touch them together in the back and then release. Exhale, drive the elbows to the floor, pinch them back and release. Okay, so this is your row. The farther under your bar you get, the harder it's going to be. The farther you walk it out, the easier it's going to be. So just by walking it out, you can make this so that really anyone can do this exercise. It's awesome for building those postural muscles, those postural stabilizers too, to bring your shoulders back and down. So that's your body weight circuit again. Do about 10 to 12. 10 to 12 of each of these on two-sided exercises, do 10 to 12 on each side, and then on the side planks, do anywhere from 15 to 45 seconds. That's your beginner circuit. Once you work through that a few times, stick with it for, for a few weeks, you can start testing out some of the, uh, the more advanced bodyweight exercises that you'll find on the site. So until next time, this is Adam Steer from bodyweightcoach.com.